Hey guys, welcome back to Stuff Steve Likes, and I hope you're having a good day. Um, I just wanted to do kind of a cool little video today. These are a few of my favorite things here, for sure. And um, I've done a couple other videos with a couple of these tools, but uh, this one is just going to be talking about the tools themselves. These are the Gransfors Brook axes that I own. Well. This is an axe, this is an axe, and this is a hatchet. And I'll get into that in just a minute, because people are like, oh, that's a hatchet, and it's not, or that's a hatchet, and it's not. This one, however, is. So I'll go over a few details on them, and what makes one an axe and one a hatchet. And then also just a little bit on the uh, company's history and so forth and how they make them. But these are, other than my bass guitars, these are the favorite these are my favorite things that I own of course my favorite people are my wife and my children and my parents and my friends and everything we're not talking about people or anything like that we're just talking about stuff tools gadgets whatever these are my favorite things the way that these are made the quality and the quality standards that this company uses and sticks to um, is unparalleled in the industry and the other thing that's so cool about these is that they are old world they are made on these incredible old um, forges and they're kind of hard to describe the axe book will show you what the forge looks like check this out that is what they're made on yeah, we got a little fish eye on the GoPro today I had to do a wide angle to get all three axes in there, but this is what they are. There's a gentleman using the axe forge, and you can see each one of these little sections is a different die that he uses to forge the axe. And this is how they still do it. Look at the big wheel up there. I mean, this is this is old school. I mean, it's not like they're, you know, using a hammer and an anvil to make these that's um you know there are a few companies that do that but these are still made the way that they did did them all the way back in the early 1900s so uh definitely very old world industrial if you want to put it that way um there are a few companies that do actual uh truly like blow by blow by blow hand forged axes out there and uh, those are on another planet price-wise, and honestly, the quality is not as good. So, uh, let's take a look at these. I've got three of them here. This is the Small Forest Axe, and this is the first one that I got. This is a 19-inch axe, okay? And the head is one and a half pounds. And this is a cross-cutting tool, meaning that this is made to delimb, to chop down trees, to cut across the grain of wood. Okay? It's not made to split. As you'll see, the angle of the edge is very thin. Okay? We can see it better this way. The edge of the angle is very thin. But this is an absolutely exceptional tool. Very easy to grip with one hand. You can use it with one hand, but you also have enough real estate on this to hold it with two. And you'll see there's quite a bit of room left on there, so you can get a really good uh, swing with this guy. As you can see up here, this axe is forged by AS. Okay. I'll show you these other two. This one is forged here by AS. And this one is forged by... MM. And you're like, what is the deal with those initials? Well, if you look in your book, you actually can see the name of the guy that made your axe. AS is Ander Anders Strumsted, and MM is Matthias or Matthias Matson. And so each of their forgers here has his initials and they each make different axes and some of them make multiple versions of the axes 
And uh, that's one thing that's really cool about these is that it identifies the maker. And so if they have a quality control issue, then they can come back and say, hey, we have had several of these axes come back with this issue or that issue. And um, over time, they can hone their craft and, and uh, just do better as they go. But uh, honestly, I don't hear about a lot of failures on these. These are really exceptional. Very nice leather sheaths on these with a nice strap. Even the strap has the GBA for Grants Forest Brook axes on there. So that's the small forest axe, and that's my two-hander that I have. And that's what makes this an axe, is the fact that you can use it with two hands and not a hatchet. Okay? This is a short one-handed tool, but it is an axe. This is the Grants First Brook Swedish Carving Axe, and just look at how beautiful this is. I mean, this, when I saw this one, like, my inner Viking just, like, made a battle cry. This thing is absolutely incredible. Very wide blade, upswept blade. And uh, I've, I use this to actually wood carve with. Again, this is a cross-cutting axe. This isn't a splitting axe but um, it's used to uh, hew spoons, bowls, uh, planks, logs, whatever you need, uh, and shape them very accurately. And the reason you can shape them accurately is because it has this very curved blade and you can really dig in and shape the wood how you want to. Now, the reason that this is an ax and this is a hatchet is because of the size of the blade and the weight. The head of this one is actually heavier than this one. This one is two pounds, this one is one and a half. So even though this is a one-hander, you know, industry-wide, it's kind of known that anything with over a one and a half pound head is typically considered an ax. Um, there are a couple uh, Husqvarna hatchets and a few others that have a little bit heavier heads but they're still shaped very traditionally. Um, this one is definitely, uh, this one is definitely an ax. And this was developed by a couple of uh, bushcrafters over in Europe. And uh, the shape and everything is very traditional for this style of ax. And you can also see that the handle is very uh, curved. And what that allows you to do is when you get close to the material, you see if I do that with this ax, if I get that angle, I'm kind of hitting that, I'm uh, hitting the stump or whatever I'm working with, and even this one. But if you look at this, because it has that curved, I can get a little bit closer to the material, and I'm not hitting this back pommel area, okay? And you notice on this, it has a finger area, so I can get choke right up, especially when I'm working with things that are very, uh, very delicate, I can choke up on that and um, and get that uh, detail work done. So that's the Swedish carving axe. I call it the sweet-ish carving axe because it's just so sweet. Again, nice leather sheath. Now this one doesn't wrap around the back, of course. It just goes up here because there's got such a, it's got such a swell there that um, it doesn't need it. Okay, very, very cool. And this is my newest one. This is the wildlife hatchet and this is definitely a hatchet it's only a one pound head on this very short handle if you if you put it up against a small forest axe you can see how much shorter it is okay and not only that but you can see how much shorter the head is as far as the bit if I take this off and I put these two together if I put them uh, both of the ends together, you can see that's quite a bit of difference on that. But look at this beautiful thing. So, so nice. Again, there's your maker mar maker's mark, Matthias Matson. Thanks, Matthias. This thing is incredible. And thank you, Anders. My other two are incredible. One thing I wanted to show on these is the grain of the hickory. Now look at look at this grain here. If you can see that 
when you're talking about an axe, you want the grain to be very straight this way. If the grain went this way, it would chip out and split out. The way that they do their handles, all of them have that, that grain going in the correct direction. All of them have that. These are American hickory handles, which is kind of funny. Uh, it's a Swedish company, but uh, their claim is that they use the best materials available and the best hickories grown here in America. So, drumsticks and axe handles. That's what our hickory is used for. And one other thing I wanted to show about these is this palm swell here. All You can see all three of them have it. This swell here is just... Man, it just really locks you in like this one here you know you can get up real close and personal with that too right up there but when you're back here man it just it just locks you in so that's the palm swell I think they call that a fawn hoof or something like that but anyway they all have that swell down at the bottom and it really keeps it from sliding out of your hands um, they all have the lanyard hole here so you can stick a lanyard in there if you want to I don't prefer a lanyard um, honestly if the axe is gonna go crazy I don't want it swinging uh, from a lanyard around my wrist because it's gonna hit my shin or something else so um, anyway those are the three models so small forest axe the Swedish carving axe and the wildlife hatchet okay and the other thing I really appreciate about these is the edge that they put on these from the factory is hair shaving sharp and uh, I guess I'll go right here Let's see if you can see this but there we go there's the hairs on the axe blade and there's a bald part on my hand and that was, when I say the slightest touch, I mean the slightest touch. They are ridiculous. When it comes to um, putting a factory edge on, these guys know exactly what they're doing. So, so nice. And that's really important. If, if a tool is sharp, it's safe because it's biting into the wood. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It's cutting. What a dull tool does is it glances off the wood and goes into your shin or goes into the ground or drops out of your hand. A dull tool, very dangerous. Sharp tool, very safe. So always keep that in mind. And I do keep a razor's edge on these. And uh, the way that I do that is with my Spyderco Sharp Maker. And I have a strop that I made out of a uh, piece of wood and an old belt. And I uh, have a leather strop that I that I uh, um, do the final polish with on the edges, and man, they're just crazy sharp. Another cool thing with each of the axes comes this axe book, and man, I just eat this stuff up. It's so cool to get an instruction manual with your tools, and uh, this talks about the parts of the axe, the different types of axes that they make, what they're used for, shows the forges, um, shows the area where uh, they're forged at, and um, man, it's just so cool. It talks about the history of the company. These are the employees of the company. And uh, anyway, they even show how to, you know, how to limb a log, um, how to make firewood, uh, how to use a splitting ax, uh, how to pound wedges, um, how to stack wood to properly dry. Like all this stuff is so cool. And uh, you know, even how to, throw an axe which is cool as well I've done a lot of that in the past and it's a blast so uh, anyway even how to sharpen it um, axe guarantee card 20 year guarantee 20 year warranty on these and uh, for each one of these uh, I, I've each one of these axes I have one of these books and I always know which one it is because it says right here large carving axe and it says large carving axe right there so this is the one that I got with this and I have one for the small forest and one for the wildlife hatchet anyway I didn't intend for this video to be this long but I just wanted to go over those and I'm gonna do individual reviews on each one of these as well but this is an overview um, and um, 
that's basically it. I hope you guys have a great evening and be safe.